What's up guys and gals, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. Yes, you read that title correctly. I closed my barbecue food truck. This is not going to be a cooking video. I wish it was, but I wanted to talk about why I closed my barbecue food truck. So right out of the gate, I do want to address the rumors. I've heard everything from I got a divorce to I sold my equipment to the health department shut me down. None of that is true. I still have my food truck. I'm still married, I'm not divorced. So I don't know who's spreading those rumors, but they are all false. I gotta tell you, there was a lot of things that led up to me closing my barbecue food truck. It's not just one thing. There's, there's several things that helped me make the decision to go ahead and close my barbecue food truck. So as I mentioned earlier, there's several reasons of why I closed my barbecue food truck, but there's one thing that stands out above all of those and that is the cost of food. So we all know that barbecue is expensive. It's expensive to buy at a raw state and it's expensive to sell once it's cooked because you have to calculate your labor, the wood, all of your foil that you use, you know, to wrap the ribs, etc. There's a lot of cost that goes in to cooking barbecue. So aside from the labor and all the supplies that it takes to cook good barbecue, again, the number one factor of me closing my barbecue food truck was the price of the proteins themselves. Briskets, beef ribs, bear ribs, uh, turkey breast, chicken, and not to mention all the containers, all your to-go containers, the barbecue sauce containers. Everything just kept going up and up and there was no sign of it getting any better. So when you own a food truck, you wanna be honest in your pricing, you wanna be fair with your customers. And it was getting to the point where I was gonna to have to raise my pricing and I really didn't wanna do that to my customers. So obviously running a food truck, you've got to make money just like any business, right? So if I were to do it again, you know, unfortunately, depending on the market price of the proteins at that point, my pricing is going to be adjusted accordingly. So I know on the surface, everything looks good from the outside looking in. You guys see my social media post. I've got a line of customers. We're selling out pictures of my barbecue platters. I mean, Texas Monthly came out to my barbecue food truck and we did make it on the top 25 new barbecue joints in Texas. And that's something that I'm really proud of. Um, you know, I was on two or three different stories on Texas Monthly. I made it on the local newspaper, front page, uh, radio spots. I mean, a lot of people were saying good things about our barbecue food truck. And I know that we were doing a lot of good things, but that's when the weather was really nice. Okay, that's when the sun is out. It's 100 degrees outside, 80 degrees. But come winter, things slow down quite a bit. So being in a food truck park, I was really limited on what I could do, but I kept adding more and more items to my menu. And honestly, my menu was probably as large as some of the top barbecue joints that you guys have been to. I know it was larger than some of the barbecue joints that I've been to, and that was my fault. That's something that I should have never let happen. So my recommendation to you is if you're thinking about starting a food truck, especially a barbecue food truck, keep it simple, keep it basic, maybe two or three proteins max, and maybe just two sides and some drinks and maybe a dessert and that is it. Again, my menu is pretty large. Now being inside of a food truck, you're limited on space and that's something that we ran into. That's an issue that we ran into as well because I couldn't take on really large catering gigs because again, I was limited on space. I only had one food warmer, which is a pretty large food warmer, but again, it still limits us to how much food we can actually cook and hold. So because of that, I was actually looking for a brick and mortar. Locations here in El Paso, there's not a ton of them. I mean, if you wanna move into a shopping plaza, a shopping center, there's a ton of those places, but the lease is really expensive. Some of those locations were probably 2,500 square feet to 3,000 square feet, and they wanted close to $10,000 a month, and that doesn't include the triple net, which is like the taxes and maintenance and stuff. That's another $1,500. So can you imagine every month starting in that 11 or $12,000 hole? That's just ridiculous. So I didn't want to move into a shopping center because you're, you're only leasing that spot. They want to lease for five, seven years, and you're really throwing that money away. It's kind of like renting a house, and I didn't want that. You know, if I'm going to spend that kind of money on something, I want to buy it. And if I ever wanted to walk away from it, I could turn around and sell that building and hopefully make a profit. But if you're leasing, it makes it difficult to do that. So I ain't gonna lie, I started to stress out a little bit because I wanted to be out of that food truck park before winter hit because I knew our business was gonna, was gonna slow down. But because I couldn't 
find the location, you know, I started to stress out a little bit and I wasn't looking for anything special. I mean, I wanted something decent, right? But I wanted that barbecue joint feel, if you will. You know, you take a look at some of the top barbecue joints in Texas. A lot of them are really nice, especially some of the newer ones. But a lot of them are, are old buildings, you know, that just scream barbecue. That's something that I was looking for. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of locations here in El Paso. So on top of all the issues that I was facing, the high cost of food, not being able to find a brick and mortar, being limited on space, winter was coming, which slowed our business down. You know, I, I did have something personal happen in our family. Yes, we are all okay, thank God. Everything's fine, nothing major. But, and we all have these issues, okay? Everybody's got personal issues, right? And it's personal, and that's why I'm not gonna say what that personal issue was, but I promise you it's none of the things that some of you guys may have heard. If, if the personal issue was the only thing that I was dealing with, I could have kept my food truck open, but with everything kind of piling up on me at one time, it was too much and I said, that's it. We, we got to stop the bleeding and I decided to close my food truck down to spend more time with my family, being there for them, be there for my wife and my daughter and do things as a family. So closing my food truck down was a really tough decision. You know, you guys know how passionate I am about barbecue. I love barbecue. And I was really chasing my dream of, of starting a barbecue food truck with plans of opening up a barbecue joint down the road. But I learned a lot, okay? And some of the things that I, some of the mistakes that I made, and I'm not afraid to say that, you know, I may have made some mistakes along the way. For example, the size of my menu. I should have never had a menu that size. I should have kept it simple. But I try to please everybody, I guess, and, and that's my fault. That's 100% on me. So if you guys are going to start a barbecue food truck, again, start with a couple of proteins, a couple of sides, and some drinks, maybe a dessert, but that's it. I mean, I had a lot going on with my menu, so that was the one thing. If I could do it again, I would limit the size of my menu and not try to cook everything, not try to be that barbecue joint that was the end game, right? That's something that I really wanted to do. But out of a food truck, to have a menu that size just wasn't working. So I know the ultimate question is, will I ever open up my food truck again? At this point, I don't know. I know the price of, of meat has not come down. In fact, it's actually gone up since I've been closed. And if I do reopen up my food truck, you know, that's something that I'm going to pay really close attention to and adjust my pricing accordingly. And unfortunately, that means that the customer is going to have to pay more for the food. but you know, I also have to make money selling barbecue. I can't just be exchanging money, right? Um, the second thing is obviously I, I won't have a menu as large as my previous menu because that it was just too much, too much to do inside of an eight and a half by 20 uh, food truck. So, you know, if I do reopen up my food truck, you guys will know about it. I'll post it on social media, but at this point I don't plan on it. So I hope this video helps some of you guys. Yes, I did want to tell my story. I felt that I owed it to you guys and especially my customers that supported my business. I mean, I had the absolute best customers, um, but I also wanted to make sure that I help as many people as I possibly can and bring you guys in to my business a little bit and talk about some of the things that may have affected my business and, and led to me closing down my food truck so that you guys don't run into the same issues. So if I do decide to reopen up my food truck, I will let you guys know. I will post it on social media and I might even make a video about it. But I want to thank you guys for your support. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.